Hi, I'm Pete. So this is a series of videos that try to introduce the main concepts of bioimage analysis. Uh, they were created as an accompaniment to a book that I wrote um, that tries to do much the same thing. And so this is all freely available online. And so this is really the reference for, for the course. And the videos are just another way of presenting the information, which perhaps will help to reinforce the ideas. Um, but if you're really interested in getting an introduction to the topic, I do recommend checking out the book because it contains some things that we can't cover in the videos, or at least described in a different way. Uh, also, it's not quite a normal book. It's actually a Jupiter book, and so it's written to be interactive and try and include a bit more than is possible in a regular paper book. So, for example, it includes some embedded videos. Um, it includes some questions, so you can test yourself as you go along. And it also includes subsections um, that describe how the concepts described in the book relate to specific software. So here, ImageJ, the popular software used for in lots of fields, but particularly in bioimage analysis. And here um, are chapters on Python, um, showing how the concepts fit with NumPy, SciPy, Scikit-Image, and so on. In addition, um, whenever you look at any of these chapters, you should find uh, that actually the code underlying the figures is written in Python, and so you can visualize the code as well. And through the wonders of Binder, um, you're even able to turn it into a live notebook, and you can make modifications to the code if you want. And so the book itself can be read in different levels. You can either just read the main concepts, or you can read and focus on the image day part, or on the Python part, or you can dig into the code behind all the figures. And so the whole goal here is to try and make it as interactive and engaging as possible to describe what can be a kind of difficult topic, or at least a um, intimidating topic um, to try and learn about. And so these videos then are they basically arose from the in-person version of the course that I taught. And so I've recorded them here so they can go along with the book and then will hopefully help more people learn about the topic as well. And so the course itself is divided into five parts. The first part, we're going to look at the basics of working with images and how images are displayed. Part two, we're going to discuss a bit about good images and bad images and how to tell them apart, because you really need to know that if you're going to do any kind of scientific analysis. And then we're going to say some words about working with colour and images. Um, part three, we're going to start processing and modifying the pixels in our images for useful purposes. And in part four, we get into filters and how they can do stuff like reduce noise within images. And finally, in part five, we'll look at image transforms and morphological operations and other useful things that we can do. Um, but to end this introduction, I just want to give the briefest of overviews of the absolutely core ideas. So the most core idea is that the images that we're working with are basically numbers. So the numbers are the pixel values, and so any analysis that we want to do on these is going to involve finding patterns in the numbers. And we could use complicated maths and statistics for that, but you're going to find that we can actually do an awful lot with just basic arithmetic. So addition, subtraction, multiplications, and divisions, or finding the maximum of a series of numbers is going to be useful as well. And so because our images comprise millions, if not billions, of, of numbers, then even these simple operations become really powerful whenever you use them in creative ways. But you do need to understand the data to make valid interpretations. And this course is not going to be able to describe everything that you're going to need for your bioimage analysis career if you decide to stick with the field. But what it does try to do is to describe the key concepts that you need to get started. Because my experience of working in this field is that it can be quite hard to find a path in and be quite hard to make sense of what's already out there. So that's what this course exists for, is to try and help people new to the field to find a path into it and to get an idea of the key, uh, the key concepts, how they interrelate and how they fit together as a basis for future work. Okay, so that's enough of the introduction and ready to start part one.